Hello and welcome to this edition of Take 10. Later, how the problem solving approach has succeeded in Plymouth. And we get an ACC's view of the new PDR2 system. But we begin by looking at safeguarding the force's information and how we all have our part to play. To get an idea of how valuable information can be, think how much people are prepared to pay for it. Mohammed Alfayed is alleged to have paid £10,000 for papers from Neil Hamilton's lawyer's dustbins to help his defence in the libel appeal. And what power can information have? The Watergate tapes led to the downfall of a president. How devastating can mislaid information be? The loss of laptops by members of the Secret Services has been a national embarrassment. There are people out there hungry to take advantage of the information this force holds and to profit from it in one way or another. Information security is the preservation of CIA. That's nothing to do with the Secret Service, but three words, confidentiality, integrity and availability. Confidentiality is that information is only disclosed to authorised individuals. Integrity, only proper and authorised changes are made to the information. And availability, ensuring that authorised individuals can access false information without undue delay or constraint. So what is information? Before the days of computers, the Second World War catchphrase was careless talk costs lives, and it still does. Then there's the paperwork. You don't even need a password to read it. There's the radio. Who else is listening to your message? And finally, there is the cyber world, where the villains are hackers and viruses. Computers are our largest and most vulnerable systems, and you can never assume that anything connected to a wire is secure. And it's not just our information on crime and criminals that has illicit value. Suppose you're a burglar planning to raid a remote country house. How useful to know what alarm measures are in place, how many officers are on duty in that district, what's their response time, which escape routes have CCTV surveillance. We've probably got all the answers somewhere amongst our information. Now, of course, we could ring fence everything, have watchtowers and Dobermans patrolling. There would be protection, but could we do our jobs? There has to be a sensible compromise between security and practicality. Yes, there may be some leaks, but they won't sink the boat. The police forces in the UK have agreed on a standard. It is the International Standard for Information Security, ISO 1 7799. The standard has 10 sections. Protection policy documentation and its dissemination. In other words, the people responsible for information security must have a written document to which they can refer. Responsibilities for protection. Protection should be assigned to information assets. Protection training and education. That's what this is. Incident reporting for security breaches. This should be immediate. Virus controls. There needs to be effective protection. Business continuity planning. Contingency planning for information disasters. Control of proprietary software copying to honour copyright. Safeguarding of organisational records. Data protection. And compliance with security policy. If we as a force don't comply with the nationally agreed standard, we may lose access to such facilities as the Police National Computer, PNC. The success of the information security policy is everyone's responsibility. So what is expected of you? A common sense approach will take you a long way. Would you let a stranger walk into your house without knowing who they are? Who's the stranger in your office? Who's the person following you through the security gate? Do you place valuable items in your home where everyone can see them? Do those files need to be left on your desk? Can you lock your filing cabinet? Where do you keep your keys? Can your computer be accessed without a password? Do you leave home without locking up? Do you leave the office without locking up? If something threatens the security of your home, do you just leave it as it is? How about at the office? When you insure your home, you're likely to get a guide setting out what you need to do to comply with the insurance. Ignore it and you may not be insured. At work you have a document, D260 on Real Search, which sets out the force security policy. Have you read it? Does it matter? Well, there have been numerous incidents within the force of unauthorised disclosures of information Many individuals have been disciplined because they have not kept to basic data protection principles. A computer within the force was put out of action by a virus imported from home. Drastic action was needed to eliminate it. A police officer in Bedfordshire crashed a training computer by trying to view pornographic material. The perpetrator of inappropriate UMs could not be caught because someone had made their password known and their account had been accessed. The benefits to the force of applying information security means that we will achieve greater public confidence, 
and our relationship between us and other forces, as well as external agencies under crime and disorder, means that we will be able to share information in a secure manner. It also means that we will operate within the law.